The first application uh, of the Schrodinger equation uh, by Schrodinger was to the hydrogen atom, uh, where he derived uh, these equations here. Uh, well, he postulated uh, this uh, form of the Schrodinger equation and then calculated the, the solutions uh, to the Schrodinger equation here. Uh, and so uh, the way he knew he was right, or the way uh, he convinced himself that this might be right, uh, was by postulating another thing uh, actually inspired by the Bohr model of the atom, and that is that uh, transitions from one energy state, so for example from the 2s, uh, from the 1s to the 2s, the interchange between these two states, the increase in energy, uh, is accompanied by absorption or emission of light uh, with that energy. And so that uh, explains why, uh, for example, for certain atoms, they only emit uh, certain colors, for example. So you can see here's an experimental spectrum. You only see certain colors, and that's because uh, the colors you see come from going from one quantum state to another. And these are the allowable states. You, don't, you can't have a quantum state here in between, for example. So you can get, which would give you light, photons of light that would be of intermediate uh, color. So the fact that his predictions of the energy difference between these different states uh, matched that observed experimentally uh, through spect spectroscopy told him that, 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 that he was right, that this was the right formulation. Uh, so how should you imagine this, uh, this process? Uh, well, to give you an example, um, here we have, this is an example for a particle in a box again, as we saw before. Here is the time independent uh, equation, uh, like the one Schrodinger derived for the, or postulated for the hydrogen atom. Uh, and the idea is then that this, for example, here we have um, solution number two. It's actually the third one because we start counting at zero, one, two. Oops, here we are. Uh, that, ha that is higher in energy than zero. And then, for example, when this uh, energy state or when this system goes from this quantum state to this quantum state, you then emit the energy difference as a photon of light. In the time independent Schrodinger equation, we just assume that this happens instantaneously. Uh, but you can also model this with the time a dependent Schrodinger equation, uh, which we also talked about in a previous video. Uh, so let me get this state. Whoops. Uh, so this state now corresponds to this state. And now uh, when I press run here, I'll, I'll run a simulation uh, using the time dependent Schrodinger equation about that'll simulate how this uh, system evolves over time. And what, what you will see is that this will um, very quickly um, change to the ground state uh, solution. Uh, and what you have to imagine is that this change that you see is accompanied by an emission of a photon with the wavelength or a color corresponding to the energy difference between state number uh, 2 and state number 0. There you are. Okay, so from the time dependent uh, Schrodinger equation, we can calculate how fast this goes, and this goes very, very fast. Uh, let me reset it and run it again. And in fact, it happened so fast that it's uh, only now become possible to actually detect this change. But for all practical purposes, this really happens instantaneously. So going from this state, assuming that you go from this state to this state instantaneously, uh, is a very good approximation uh, for chemistry and, and, and nanoscience.